Coach, um, Skylar Thomas entered the transfer portal today. I was just curious um, how, how that came about and your thoughts on that. Um, yeah, um, we had a talk yesterday. Um, I think it feels like it's the best thing for him right now. I mean, we wish him nothing but the best. There's no, uh, there's no ill will from either side, in my opinion. Uh, we just, this, here it is, Brandon. This is a real difficult time for all of these kids. And I think right now we just got to be as supportive as we can with them um, and, and know who's going to be rolling with us and who uh, who's not. So, uh, you know, Skyler has, you know, we've been through a lot together already in a short period. And, you know, I wish him nothing but the best and success and, and uh, where, where he plays next. Do you have any idea about how his departure will impact the defense? Um, well, he's a very productive player that's played a lot of football for us. So um, that would suggest that, you know, you're losing a player who's, who's produced and played at this level on this stage before. So now it's time for somebody to step up. Other questions for Coach Rolovich? Go ahead, Theo. Hey, Nick, we talked to uh, Max Borgie earlier today on the on, on the Pac-12 call, and you kind of talked about not not ever really thinking about opting out and, and preparing for the NFL. Um, obviously, a lot of other high-profile players have done that. Uh, what, is, what does that kind of say to his university and, and wanting to just spend another season here with his teammates? Hey, Theo, you were breaking up a little bit. Can you ask that again? Yeah, Matt, we talked to Max Borgi earlier today on the Pac-12 call, and he, he talked about never really wanting to, to opt out. He never really considered that. A lot of, lot of high-profile Pac-12 players have done that already. Uh, but, but what does that kind of say about Max's commitment to, to playing here another season and, and spending, uh, spending his, ju his junior year with his teammates? Oh, I think this place has been the best decision he could have made for his, his career. I think he enjoys it very much. I think he enjoys being a coup. I think he's uh, got some unfinished business. Um, but – I can't speak too much other than I know I never really had a conversation with him um, about opting out, but, you know, we're, we're very glad he's on this team and really, really enjoy his mindset, you know. Other questions for coach? Raise your hand. Zach Armstrong, go ahead. Coach, it was reported today that the Pac-12 board approved uh, family members and guests of student athletes to attend football games. What's your reaction to that, and how did the team react to that? Uh, I don't know that I haven't heard from the team at all on that, so I can't really speak on that right now. Uh, I, you know, I mean, you talk about this, this is their babies, you know, doing something, you know, really living out their dream and. Uh, I think it's it, it's a good decision, especially for the players, you know, to have the families there as long as it, you know, coincides with, you know, the, the health departments in, in the areas around the, the campuses. So, um, you know, I, I can't see that being a negative for, for either players or families, especially guys, in, you know, coming into their senior year or, you know, this could be their last year playing. I mean, th th these are real special moments that um, – you know, if possible, I'm glad the, the family get to be in person for some of these time, for some of these games. And not sure how much little special teams details you've been able to work in, but are there some leading candidates for the punt gunner spot and a kickoff team specialist? The punt, the gunner spot? Yeah. Uh, I I don't think that I. You know, I know we're we're, we're working the drills. I don't know that we've gotten that, that far to say who's going to be the starting gunner yet, but uh, I think there's some willing candidates and that's a very, you know, Coach Gobi does a great job, uh, not only with inspiration on special teams, but schematically and, and really getting those guys to take some pride in it. So um, we're just looking for major gunner activity when we get the chance. Thank you. Joe McHale of KHQ, go ahead. Coach Max also said during the seminar earlier today that he has no idea who's going to win the quarterback battle uh, between the three guys. 
Uh, what about you? Any idea of who maybe is stepping up more than another in practice? Maybe someone separating themselves a little bit? I don't know that there's enough separation. You know, I'm kind of in, 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 in Max's uh, opinion. We, we've got to start whittling it down here fairly quickly. But, um, you know, there's not enough probably data or, you know, to really make a real educated decision yet. You know, we, they haven't been in a lot of live situations. You know, who's going to handle the pocket? You know, seven on seven is much different than, than a team, you know, uh, situation. Plus the, you know, who's going to, who's going to make people better around them in clutch situations. That's, that's one of the things that's, that's going to be hard to make the decision. Um, you know, and plus, you know, they haven't had enough reps at the offense to really feel, feel terribly comfortable in it yet. So they're still learning different things every day. Um, but, you know, I wish I could, uh, I'd like to give you a starting quarterback so we can talk about some other stuff, but. Uh, I appreciate all of their um, willingness and, and desire to be the guy. I think that's there, but there's still inconsistencies with all three of them um, right now to, to say that anyone's separated themselves. Today we had a pretty. Today we got some of that those situations though. I mean, to be honest, the defense, you know, really was choking out the offense most of the day, and uh, so this is going to be some good film for us to see how they move in the pocket, how they lead their huddle when, when it's their time. You know, you know, you know today was the first day in, in full pads, so we did some some live stuff, and it was good to see. I think mean, they've been waiting for that, too, all the, all the players, not just the quarterback. And just to follow up on that, Coach, do you see a situation, because this fall camp is so short before the start of the regular season, because these quarterbacks aren't necessarily going to have a whole lot of reps, do you see a situation that you could have two of them playing early on in the season in the same game? Sure. I got, I mean, in, unless one starts separating themselves and, and, you know, taking it, you know, that could very well happen. I don't know. I've done that before. It, it just elongates the competition somewhat. You know, they got to be, and it could be, what is the team we're playing? What, what are they doing to us? Maybe it's better for one of the guys. Um, I think what you described is, you know, could lead that to happen, and I'd rather it not. But if that's how we got to do it, we got to do it. And I don't, and I'm not sure the guy who takes the first snap is going to take the last snap. Because again, there's going to be consistent, uh, a constant evolution of of their development within the offense. Thank you. You're welcome, Cody. With the Evergreen, go ahead. Hey, Coach. Um, today, uh, in the conversation with Max, he talked about kind of the running back role in this offense and how. Um, he may not catch as many passes, but he also added that uh, he may be getting some work in the slot. Is that something that you've um, kind of thought of going forward is how you're going to get him involved in the passing game, seeing that he is one of the most dynamic pass catchers at that position? No, that's, that's definitely been some of the conversation. Um, we don't want to bend the offense too much because, um, you know, because his production in the pass game has been so – um, so at such a high level, um, we know he can catch the ball. Um, you know, there's there's empty situations where, you know, he could fit in, which we've done in the past. Um, but he's still working on pass pro and and seeing where you know, you know, learning the running game and getting. A, and I think this is one of the positives of having Brian Smith at the running back position, the guy who knows the, the offense top to bottom. <laughs> Excuse me, <laughs> and can. Uh, can can sprinkle that in to the running back room. You know, Dion uh, Markoff catches the ball real well, so um, I think it's a good place for Brian to be, and I think it's a good place um, as far as meeting room for those running backs to get a grasp on the entire offense. I think they'll come out very knowledgeable at the end of their time here by being in that room. Final few questions for Coach Rolovich. Raise your hand. No more. There's no more, Bill. Theo, go ahead. Yeah, I've got one more for you, Nick. Uh, yeah. we, we talked to Abe Lucas uh, the other day, and then he kind of talked about having three offensive line coaches in, in his four years, and I believe that's the case for for him, Josh Watson, and uh, and Liam Ryan. Um, how does that kind of impact a player to have that many position coach to, coaches, both positively and negatively, do you think? Uh, I think it teaches exactly what this game's about. This game's about um, midstream adjusting, doing the best for your teammates, 
being open to um, new ways of doing things. I think it'll give them at the end of it a lot of knowledge um, in preparation because, you know, I think all, all three of them have aspirations to play at the next level. And, you know, the excuse of, well, I've had too many coaches in too many years doesn't, that, that doesn't help the, the, make the roster. So I think taking it as a positive, you know, obviously um, learning from the guys they've had and seeing what they can get from Webb um, and, and, and into the buy-in of the offense that they're in now, um, I think it's, it's good skill development for real life. You know, if you get a job and you get a different boss and he takes a different job and you got a different boss, you got to adjust, you got to feed your family. And, and um, so I, is it, is it, you know, unicorns, butterflies and rainbows? Probably not, but it is an opportunity to grow as a young man and, and prepare them for real life. But I think they've been um, very willing to do that. And do you, do you have any more clarity on who kind of fits best at each of the four receiver spots and, and who have you kind of been working in at each of those four spots? That have, has anyone kind of really taken hold of, of any of those four yet? Uh, Travell had a great catch today. I wish you were there, Theo. You could have seen it. Great catch. I wish um, I was too. I know you do. <laughs> you got to get, get this COVID thing over with and come watch. Um, no, I think uh, – Renard has done a real nice job in the slot. Chabelle's done a real nice job in the slot. Joey Hobart made a big play today in the slot. Uh, you know, Jameer's really dynamic uh, on the outside for us right now. Uh, you know, I, I, Bacon, Mitchell Quinn, you know, Calvin on the outside are all doing some good things for us. And what about uh, Brandon Gray on the outside? Has he been mixing in there? Uh, not as much. Not as much at this point. All right, final question. Zach, go ahead. Coach, you talked a little bit about the defense dominating today, um, and we also talked about Nathaniel James standing out in the camp. The defense really came out with good energy on the first day of first pads and really dominated, I would say, the, uh, the energy of the, the, the majority of practice. I thought, mm -hmm. I thought the offense responded in, in the last period where – uh, and it was good, and that's great for that to happen. That I went over the defense. I said, you know, you guys have, have won the day so far. It's time for you to choke them out. And I went to the offense. I said, you guys have been choked out all day. You better, you better sprawl out and get out of that headlock and, and make something happen. And and that's that's good for both sides to have that opportunity to do that. But go ahead with your question. I was just going to ask uh, if anybody in the interior defensive line outside of Nathaniel James has kind of stood out to you, both in terms of veterans and new guys. Well, I think Christian Mejia has gotten a, you know, a, a new maybe maybe chance, different mindset. I, he, he's been very productive. Amir Crowder's getting a bunch of reps. Uh, you know, who else? Who else can I talk to you about? Um, there, there's a lot of guys. Um, moving, not necessarily moving in there, but there's a lot of guys, you know, the more you guys you have in there that can play, it's going to help us through the long run. Um, so those are some of the names I will give you right now. Thank you. You guys just want a depth chart, don't you? That's all you want. Just say, just say, can we have a depth chart? Can we have a depth chart? Nobody wants a depth chart. <laughs> if you had one. <laughs> <laughs> No, I appreciate you guys. I know you guys got a job to do. But uh, all right, coach. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yeah, I wasn't done. Oh, sorry, I thought you were done. Thank you, everybody.